there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a book haul. The books that I will be hauling come from uh, a brick-and-mortar bookstore called Labyrinth Books in Princeton, New Jersey. However, this particular haul uh, is from an online shopping trip that I made there. Uh, Labyrinth Books sent me a catalog. I picked the books that I want, and they sent them to me. Uh, there are 15 books total, uh, and... Hopefully, uh, with time, I can come across some more brick-and-mortar bookstores that have online services that I can utilize because I have been acquiring just about all of my books through online shopping since everything started taking place. Uh, but the uh, let's get right into it. Uh, first one that I'm going to show you is a book called Red Meat Republic by Joshua Splett. And this has to do with the uh, great impact of uh, red meat in the American diet uh, since the turn of the 20th century. Uh, it start, according to uh, the blurb, uh, Red meat started making its way into American diets at the end of the 19th century, uh, but it has had a great impact on uh, not just the American diet, but also the American food industry, uh, and I'm inclined to learn some more about it. Next one that I'm going to show you is a book called Showdown by Will Haygood. Uh, the uh, full title to this is Showdown, Thur Thurgood Marshall and the Supreme Court Nomination that Changed America. And this pertains to the uh, appointment of uh, Thurgood Marshall to the Supreme Court back in the 1960s. Uh, Lyndon Johnson was the one that appointed him, and he is the first black uh, justice to appear on the court. Uh, Thurgood Marshall is a uh, champion justice for uh, progressive thinkers uh, because he uh, pointed out and uh, manned a lot of cases pertaining to uh, civil rights issues and other social issues in the United States. Uh, this covers the beginning of uh, his journey, but uh, Marshall remained on the court until 1991, uh, where he was uh, succeeded uh, by Clarence Thomas. Uh, he was another black justice, but uh, ironically enough, he is arguably the most conservative uh, justice uh, during his time, uh, a graph that I read deems him to be even more conservative than uh, Antonin Scalia. Next book that I acquired is The Quotable Jung, uh, collected and edited by Judith Harris. Uh, Jung is a, uh, a Swiss psychologist, uh, very often... Uh, mentioned alongside uh, Sigmund Freud, uh, but uh, this uh, pertains to different uh, quoted passages uh, from different uh, works and essays uh, within uh, Carl Jung's lifetime. I'm interested to learn more because I think that these can also uh, strengthen my uh, literary arguments as well, because uh, psychological thought is a very important uh, thing to take into consideration as you are reading. Uh, next, I acquired The Rise and Fall of Adam and Eve by Stephen Greenblatt. I recognize this name from uh, Norton Anthologies, and this is published by Norton. Uh, and this pertains to uh, Adam and Eve in the historical context, uh, be it their story and the impact that the story has had th 
throughout long term. Next, I have Alan Turing, The Enigma. Uh, this was put. To, this was written by Andrew Hodges, and it is a biography on the uh, British mathematician who had a major impact during the Second World War when it came to cracking codes uh, pertaining to uh, Nazi technology. Uh, he it really had an impact on the. Uh, the uh, allied strategy on being able to uh, pull apart the access strategy. Uh, unfortunately for Turing, uh, he came out as being gay and was punished for doing so uh, because sodomy was illegal. And he was chemically castrated and it altered his life for the worse. So a tragic conclusion, but Turing is someone that I definitely want to learn more about. Next I picked up Fishes, The Animal Answer Guide by Jean Helfman and Bruce Collette. Uh, this is, uh, from what I read thus far, it is uh, a general Q&A about anything that you would want to know about fishes, and I would like to learn more about uh, fishes. Uh, it would be very interesting to uh, accumulate some information, uh, just how I want to uh, strengthen my general knowledge, too. Next one I want to show you is Red, The History of a Color, by Michel Pastoreau. Uh, and this is a micro history all about the color red. Uh, Pastor Roux has also uh, written books about the colors green, blue, and black. And he also wrote about the history of stripes in The Devil's Cloth, A History of Stripes. Uh, and this is just read in its great historical context, and I really hope that uh, Pasperu expands on this with even more colors, because there's so much to explore. And I'm also a bit of a nut for uh, Crayola crayons, because of how uh, fascinating they are with the exploration of color, and to me, they are the only, they are the only crayon of decent quality. I'm expanding my cookbook collection a little bit as well, uh, which uh, many of my more recent uh, book shopping uh, extravaganzas uh, consisted of cookbooks. Uh, I would, I would be inclined to engage in some more hands-on reviews of some of the recipes, too, because I feel that the best way to review it is to actually have cooked uh, the recipes and follow them as accurately as possible to determine uh, the quality of the food. But I bought the French Kitchen Cookbook by Patricia Wells, uh, and Wells has demonstrated that she is a grand authority on French cooking and has written extensively on the topic. Uh, she is a global critic and she is a, uh, uh, she's also a culinary teacher who teaches French cooking. The recipes in here seem quite appealing. Next book that I'm going to talk about is Japanese Tales of Lafcadio Hearn. Uh, this is edited and introduced by Andre Cordrasso, and the foreword is uh, by Jack Zipes. Uh, this is part of a series known as the Oddly Modern Fairy Tales series, and this includes Hearn's uh, uh, collection of Japanese fairy tales, which 
Uh, from what I saw, it wasn't necessarily complete because I noticed one of my favorites, uh, The Boy Who Drew Cats, is not in here. Uh, we went over The Boy Who Drew Cats back in Season 5. Uh, it was quite an insightful discussion, uh, but this does include more uh, than I've seen before. And also part of the oddly mo modern fairy tale series is Workers' Tales. Socialist Fairy Tales, Fables and Allegories from Great Britain. Uh, this is edited by Michael Rosen. Uh, I'm just interested to learn about another perspective. Uh, I do not identify as a socialist, uh, but I want to see the uh, how they approach socialism and uh, that way of thinking. Next I got Leonardo and the Last Supper uh, by Ross King. Uh, Ross King has written about uh, uh, Italian art uh, during the, uh, the, the Renaissance period and of other uh, subjects of that matter. Uh, and I'm looking to get more into uh, art history. Uh, this pertains to uh, uh, da Vinci's uh, life uh, leading up to and uh, uh, specifically concentrating on his creation of uh, the painting that gave him great acclaim uh, with The Last Supper. And The Last Supper uh, this particular painting really painted uh, a visual image to uh, the way that the Catholic Church sees the, uh, the event, the biblical event that took place. Fulfilling an interest of mine that I'm uh, picking up on learning more about mathematics, uh, I picked up Everyday Calculus by Oscar E. Fernandez. Uh, and uh, this seems to uh, explore calculus on an accessible level. Uh, and I am interested to uh, see whether or not it speaks to me in any which way, because number one, Math was never a good subject for me. And two, I never took calculus. I, I went up to geometry in high school. I took algebra one and two as remedials. And then I took statistics as my uh, math requirement. I only wanted to take what I needed. And I wanted to take it as soon as possible so that I could be done with math. Uh, but... Uh, you may see that in the seasons to come, uh, I might be incorporating works about math as well and finding ways that we can have fun with exploring. On the topic of wanting to learn more about animals, uh, I picked up The Lives of Bees by Thomas D. Seeley, uh, and this has to do with just the uh, the exploration as the exploration of bees as a species and uh, them in the wild and it also would touch upon their importance to uh, society. This book really interested me as I came across it, and that is fear and the muse kept watch. Uh, this is uh, written by Andy McSmith and it pertains to uh, uh, art in the humanities during the uh, Stalin reign. Uh, this, be it, uh, this particularly concentrates on uh, literature because it makes mention to uh, Anna Akhmatova, uh, Osip Mandelstin, uh, Boris Pasternak, uh, but it also explores uh, other forms of media, uh, 
film and uh, art, uh, because it does make mention to uh, Eisenstein, who was a noteworthy director. Uh, but you had to be very careful during this era when it came to producing content, because uh, Stalin was very quick to uh, naming uh, enemies of the people. Uh, but more they were more so known as threats to his leadership. And lastly, I picked up Death by Water. Uh, this is a novel by Kenzaburo Oe. And what attracted me to this is that he is a uh, Nobel Prize winning author. Uh, I would like to incorporate more uh, Nobel Prize winning uh, uh, authors, particularly in the Nobel Prize in Literature category, uh, into my collection. I know that there has been uh, great senses of controversy pertaining to uh, a sense of uh, bias based off of local connections. Uh, probably the biggest one was when uh, Bob Dylan won the prize in 2016, uh, but I have an interest in lists like many of other people do, uh, and I think that many of the Nobel Prize in Literature writers do garner a sense of merit. I acquired 15 books, so, and they are pretty sturdy, so picking them up uh, is going to be a little bit of a task, uh, but uh, I'm going to leave a list down below to what I acquired, and uh, I'm definitely eager to check them out for myself. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you check out some more videos from our channel. For now, keep reading.